So the presentation is called Business Activity Monitoring with uh, Nagios. And uh, business activity monitoring was um, something that Gartner uh, defined and coined in, uh, I think, around 2000. And this is the definition from Wikipedia, really. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the source here. But uh, Gartner coined this definition and said that uh, Business activity monitoring is to providing real-time information to business, to the business operation, not to IT. And with the benefit here of making the enterprise and the business be able to make decisions on data. Uh, that's strange. And uh, also to be able to quickly address problems that occur in their application or in the business processes. Um, and the third thing that they saw as a benefit was that with this information they were gathering from the, from the application, from the processes, they could do decisions on using the organization in a different way. So say, for example, you were alerted very early on that your order volumes would be much higher than your normal expectations. You could refocus your resources of manpower to uh, meet this demand. So using real-time information to do operational decisions was the whole idea with this. The questions I get a lot when talking to companies about this is, well, we have business intelligence. We invested hundreds of euros and hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars in business intelligence. But the thing with business intelligence is that you're always doing intelligence on historical data each month, each quarter, or something like that. So BAM, or business activity monitoring, is focusing on the real time, much more an operational view of what is going on than a historical view. So BI would be much more strategic, and BAM much, much more operational. So many of you probably think, okay, doing business activity monitoring isn't that the same as doing IT surveillance and monitoring on our IT systems and infrastructures. Well, to some extent that is correct, and we will cover this in this presentation. But the first difference is, of course, that the, the questions that the business want to know about what's going on is different from the typical IT. So here we have, for example, Business want to know if the number of orders are dropping below the expectation of a Friday in the end of the month. That expectation, exception from what is expected, would for them be something that raise an alarm or notification. Or the number of errors on the EDI incoming files, on the data in the, in the files are more, have more errors than what they are expected. So the questions are very different and described often in business terms. What it comes down to is very much like we do in IT. It's something about volumes, rates, or errors. And that is what we want to do surveillance on. When talking to customers on this topic, this is very much sort of my non-scientific findings that we have seen. Uh, typically, there is many companies maybe have lots of IT surveillance installed and in operations, but from a business perspective, they have very limited or none. Uh, typically, you see the things they have is that an email is generated when a batch file of important invoices, for example, is sent to a uh, correct address or sent to the systems it should go to. Uh, so they are flooded with emails saying things are okay instead of getting notifications when things go wrong. So an error is implicit, a lack of a good email. So that is one of the problems. Uh, the other thing we have seen in the projects we have been involved in is that very simple problems are, de are not detected because they don't have any business surveillance but that will generate a huge problem in the end of this process. 
And uh, we have had examples in transportation where simple things that goes wrong early in the morning end up with you have hundreds of vans just standing without knowing what to load on the trucks, for example. So that is a high impact of the business and the quality of service. The other thing, you talk to people, uh, talk to people in IT about this, in this area, they are not very interested often. They, they are concerned about the infrastructure, servers, network, etc. But they don't really have any knowledge about what's going on in the application or what the business system looks like. So it falls between the shares a bit, this question. Again, it's not a business intelligence problem or question because the business intelligence has a lack of real time. Even that customers often start to claim we have surveillance, we have business intelligence. Uh, business operations people or business IT people often have a low maturity in this area. They don't work according to maybe the IT processes that we do in IT. So they don't have any Thing. They don't have any knowledge or expectation about if you have a problem, I should acknowledge it, it should be notified, some groups, etc. They work very much, much more on sort of unstructured. Uh, the other thing we have seen also is that many business applications just lack interfaces that could be used to doing good surveillance on them. So that is uh, also a problem. So let's take a sort of see my real life example here of a typical business process that are depending on IT to a very high degree. A simple uh, uh, process I think everybody can understand. You have a customer here that wants to send a package to a customer over here at a different location. And during this process you're using transportation vans, and terminals to reload your goods or your package that you have. This process typically starts with this customer sends the shipment order to the transportation company. And that shipment order really kicks off the whole process. And during the process, the package or goods are tagged or co uh, read with barcode readers or weight and volume machines and sends event to event management system that goes into the logistics systems and these events sort of push the whole application logic forward and forward what to do with this package or goods. At some point in time for this package will go, the information about the package will go to a geographical routing system. This is very typically for doing optimization on how to deliver the package and how also how to load the package on a truck, for example. The information goes back and in the end, when the package are delivered, the logic, logistic system can send it to the billing system and an invoice can be created. This is typically a process-driven business. And this is our example we use to understand what is the difference, what we do we need to have in addition to the IT surveillance to do business activity monitoring. First of all, the thing that we can see is that the metrics we are want to measure on, the, the services that we want to monitor, Behave, oh, sorry. Is um, very much something that is time dependent. This is the example of the shipments coming into the logistics system. And you can see we have a low volume in the morning and it increased over the day. The other thing we can see is that this profile of how many shipments I can expect over a day is calendar driven. Mondays, Fridays, we have a lower shipment rate than we have on Wednesdays, for example. Uh, beginning of December, when everybody wants to send the Christmas package, it's also much higher. 
So the profile of what we can expect, the data, the volume we can expect, is depending on the cal calendar. And it changes over some type of time interval. The other thing this picture shows is that the invoice volume is, of course, dependent on how, much uh, how many shipments we get to the system. So if I want to define how many invoices I can expect, I need to know something about how many shipments we got into the system. So they are very process related, the data we have in the system. So this is something we have to manage and understand doing business activity monitoring. The other thing we have seen is that much of the stuff you want to monitor is not a single entity that you can just measure in one system. If you want to create ratios, for example, you need to be able to take shipments data from the logistics system, you need to take invoicing from the invoice billing system, and you need to create new, what we call composite or virtual, virtual is maybe more in fashion these days, to create something that is a, a new entity you want to measure on, which is the invoicing rate. So this type of composite metrics is key and used a lot. The whole, when we started one and a half a year ago for a transportation company or a worldwide transportation company, but well, we started in Sweden, uh, one other thing when we looked at the market, because we were Nagios people and we said, of course, we're going to use Nagios for this. But the thing that we couldn't find or we couldn't find anyone have was this sort of type of process dynamic thresholds. Because I can't really set the threshold to a fixed static value or just a percentage of something. I need to be able to make more complicated threshold settings. First of all, I need to be able to specify a threshold profile that is my expectation. And this example, again, we use the shipment. And I need to be able to plot how this threshold curve will look over some time period, typically 24 hours. I also need to be able to define different threshold profiles depending on the calendar because I have totally different expectations depending on day or month, etc. The other challenge we saw that was that this is my sort of Mickey Mouse uh, mathematics. This should be a, what you call function sign instead. But you can say here, in the example we had, we, we, we were sending things to this geographical coding system shipments to be geographically coded. And if I want to define a threshold for the geographical coded, how many I can expect to have done, I have to set it in relationship to how much shipments I really have. So I need to be able to define thresholds that are some sort of logic, mathematical logic, here a very simple one, 80% of the shipments. So this is a threshold that is dependent of something else that is measured or that I am monitoring. The other thing is the latency. Like we had on the previous slide, we had shipments and we had invoices, or we see that they have dependency. And we have this for the geographical coding too. So the question is, when I say I want to set the the threshold for the geographical coding to a percentage of my shipment, the question is, what, at what time of shipments do I want to set it to? So the latency here says, I want to set the threshold of my geographical coding to 80% of the shipments, but how shipment was, the volume of shipment was 30 minutes ago, ago or an hour ago, or a day ago depending again how the business process looks like. And I also maybe want to com make composite thresholds that are more complicated. Here the rule really is a mistype, but it should say invoices instead. 
So the threshold for invoicing number of errors should be the shipment errors uh, as a, part, a ratio of shipments and multiplied with invoices. This is wrong. So I can have the, I have the need to make really complex uh, thresholds. Here I have simple mathematics, but it could be the, uh, some other complex mathematical expression I want to define for my threshold. So this is for me one of the key aspects, dynamic threshold management. And here the example is a transportation system, but it could use for any data you could measure on and you get into your notification surveillance system. To just show you some sort of examples how it could look in Nagios with PMP for Nagios, you can, this is difficult. Uh, you can see here we, we measure, now it's black for a customer, but this could be our shipment. We can see now we are measuring 75,194 shipments. The current calculated threshold is 55,000, and then you see the warning level and the critical level when we generate an alarm. And from the graphs, you can see the black is the threshold, the yellow is the, what we really measure, and you can also see that the threshold curve here is different depending on the day of the week, because that is what the business ha is. It's, it has different volumes of expectation of shipments. So the nature of, of uh, doing business activity monitoring, first, it's an operational monitoring, not business intelligence. Then we have to ha understand we have time dynamic in both of the data and in the threshold settings we're doing. We have dependency between what we measure and thresholds and what we measure, uh, dependency between the, the stuff we measure. And we need to be able to correlate data to create new measurement entities, especially for ratios. So we couldn't find any system that did this. We didn't want to create a new Nagios because it's great with the stuff out there. So we went, wanted to contribute to the open source market with our needs. And with sponsorship from uh, this worldwide transportation company called DHL, we developed a component which you could say is an add-on to Nagios. And it's called BizCheck. It really includes a number of modules, a connection module that make the connection to the different system you want to monitor, a scheduling module that you can define interval, how often you want to do a connection and measure something. You can express that as intervals or as a cron expression or even more complicated than cron, really. And when you have data that you have collected, depending on your schedule, it's sent to a threshold class. That we have developed a number of those, but you can develop your own. So you can make any complicated thresholds calculations you really want. And since we have this need of time dependency between data, there is a cache in the system, so you can retrieve historical measured value to put and use as thresholds or in your uh, the way you want to retrieve data from the systems. And then you just have a server integration that integrates with different, uh, with different surveillance system. What we had initially was just Nagios, so we do uh, NSCA integration with Nagios. But with a version coming out now that is in a release candidate, you can develop your own server integrations or we even have done one for OpenTSDB that was mentioned earlier of uh, one of the presenter, which is a real cool to do real-time uh, uh, data on a huge amount of different systems, different uh, data. So this is something you can deploy. It just run, runs alongside with Nagios as its own process, 
and just send these passive checks to Nagios. So if you already have Nagios in your environment, this is that simple to get in there. It's just a new service in, uh, in Nagios, really. Um, I will not, I'll mention some of the features already. Uh, the important here is it's open source, it's a GPL2, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, free of use, of course. So what we have seen is the sort of lack of not having BAM business activity monitoring in the company is that these sort of simple business problems, just that you have lower expectation of your order in flow, flow of the orders, or you have some higher, high, higher error rates than you normally have, this will cause you big disasters if they're not detected in real time. From, I think from unquoted from uh, DHL, they have probably, with, with this system, they have avoided at least 10 big problems where they will have vans on a terminal that they can't reload or can't load on because they don't have anything, don't have the right data. So it's a, it's a quick payback if you can convince the customer that business activity monitoring is a critical thing to have. The other thing we have seen is that many of the business IT groups or business operations groups they are not really aware of what's going on in their systems. Getting the data, measuring stuff, getting the visualization up in Nagios creates for them an awareness on how my business tend to look at and how it relates to each other. So that, that sort of security is an important thing. Uh, the thing, one of the reasons why we did this open TSDB integration was that if we can convince companies to bring both sort of the infrastructure data, like CPU utilization or uh, memory usage, bandwidth, etc., and be able to correlate that with what you measure from a business activity mon mon monitoring point of view, you can start to understand the the resources utilization from a business view instead of just understanding my CPU. Uh, my CPU utilization is 50% of the max, but what, what are, what's going on really in the systems? So I think it's a good, very important and maybe not a very, uh, not many people do it. It would be interesting to hear uh, in your questions or afterwards if people are doing this. What we have seen is that it's a lack of this type of surveillance, but it's a great opportunity with open source tools we already have in place, but with a small addition of this. So I would advise you, try BizCheck, especially if you're already running Nagios or any Nagios distribution, it will just be another thing sending passive checks to Nagios. So thank you for listening. I know you're waiting for your lunch, so um, you can find this check on these URLs. Any feedback or additional questions would be great. And uh, if you don't have the time to ask your questions now, I will be here the whole day. So I would love to have some more feedback or questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I see that somebody's already escaping and moving towards the lunch outside. Hello. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um, what about gathering the, the business uh, val uh, da data like uh, invoices or uh, uh, because we have, we always has a legacy system. Yeah, that's true. And I think you're really spot on there because that is one problem. Many of the business systems, they are focused on developing functionality and business developers don't maybe think about surveillance in this area. 
So that is uh, it's an important thing. Like you see here, the, we have made an architecture that has a connection mechanism, and you can add your own mechanism. But I would say that in 80% of the cases, it's a SQL. So you connect to the database, and you retrieve data. But you can also, we also have like a web service interface, or I could even envision screen scraping has been a discussion here. But it's right, you need to get the data from the source in some way, and that can be a trick depending on the sort of how good the system is. But I would say database access is the waste majority. Any other questions? The, yes, over okay. there. Uh, is, is there any integration with any kind of project management so you can see easily when going, things are going havoc? With project, with project management, if you see that you have a, well, you're absolutely over capacity or... I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. A kind of, 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 of monitoring like you did for, for, for a logistics business process. Is there something similar, some, some connected to a project management system? Oh. Yeah. For error rates or delivery late or yeah, the, from from sort of the app, from Bischek's point of view, it can be anything as long as you can connect it to. I mean, Bischek is not uh, spec is, uh, made for transportation. You, I mean, as long as you can measure it, you could put in anything you want there, like you can with Nagios. So it depends on your the system you talk about what type of interfaces it has and how documented it is or you can retrieve that information. But as long as you can retrieve it, you can put it in here. I don't know if it answered your question, but... Yes, it did. But it's a, like the, the question before, the trick can be how do I get a connection and how do I retrieve data from a legacy system or from a business system? And there you have very different maturity, I think. SAP probably have thousands of interfaces you can use. And okay, thank you. Any further questions? I have a question, if it's okay. Yeah. For the guys who asked about dynamic thresholds, it would be interesting to see what your feedback on this is. If this answered some of your questions, and if this was uh, what you were thinking about when you asked about dynamic thresholding. We will try it for sure and let you know. Because we need it, so... Okay. <laughs> well, if you want to know more, please uh, let's have a chat in the la during lunch and okay, I'll tell course. you more. Thank you very much, of course. Thank you.